And Coach Howard, thank you for joining us. Well, talk about the process. I mean, you were interim coach, and now you're the head coach. How how was that process, and, and how did you keep your cool and stay focused on the job at hand? Well, you know, uh, I was just so pleased and happy and humbled that, you know, Dr. Hugini and, and Mr. Brian Hicks, our athletic director, uh, gave me the opportunity first to be the interim coach. And obviously that's always tough, you know, going into a season as your interim coach, trying to prove yourself, trying to make sure that, you know, your, your team is playing hard and, and doing exactly what you're asking them to do. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, myself and, and the assistants, what we wanted to do, we wanted to come in and try to change the culture, uh, try to get players uh, into Alabama A&M that, that fit our character. Uh, and that was one of the things we really focused on was to bring in high character players. So, you know, we did that. How has uh, COVID-19, uh, everything changing, how has that affected what you were trying to do as far as improve this team. You've had so many months away from your players and how much was that, uh, how much has that altered the way that you start the process this season? Well, COVID-19 changed a lot. Uh, you know, we were in the uh, SWAC tournament uh, playing out in Prairie View and, you know, we first got word then that once you get back to campus, uh, basically campus was going to be shut down with, within a week. Uh, so obviously that, that took away our, uh, what I would consider our postseason uh, conditioning and individual work. Uh, then throughout the summer, no one was allowed on campus. So, you know, usually that's when you bring your players back in, you know, around that June 1st uh, time frame, and, you know, you start building your team in the summer. Uh, and with us being a young team, you know, I felt as though that really, put us behind. Uh, but now that since we're back in school, we're, we're back on the court now. Uh, so we're playing a little catch up, uh, you know, but we want to still start slow. So right now we're in individual groups, uh, working on our individual skill work. And then probably in about three weeks, we'll start really concentrating more, uh, more so on the team aspect. Uh, Coach, when you look at everything that has been happening in the community off the court, uh, what have you said to your players about social justice, about voting, about being active in the community? And you personally, have you taken the initiative to say, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm good to vote. I'm good to be active in social, you know, to express my feelings about social justice. Well, that was one of the first things that, that we addressed, uh, I would say way back in the spring, uh, where we had several Zoom meetings where, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was just get all the players, just get their perspective on everything was going on uh, around our nation. Uh, and I can say right now we're 100 uh, percent as far as uh, voter registration. A every player is registered to vote. Every coach is registered to vote on my staff. Uh, and, you know, we've had other uh, guest speakers just come in and talk to us about the importance of voting. Uh, having your voice being heard. Uh, and there's, there's, there's no other great feeling than as an 18 year old, 19 year old, you know, once you go to the polls and vote, I remember my first time, it was actually uh, down here in Alabama uh, when I was at UAB. Uh, and when I got registered to vote here in Alabama, you know, it's just a, just a great feeling. Uh, but one of the things we also wanted to tell our players is, you know, educate yourself. Uh, educate yourself on on all the issues. Educate yourselves on you know the candidates uh, and what they stand for. Uh, and I know our players have taken this very seriously. And also on uh, November third, uh, that's going to be an off day for us. No practice, nothing is going on because you know I want my players if if they haven't done an absentee ballot, uh, you know I'm giving them an off day to you know if they need to go back to their uh, state to vote or go to their area to go back and vote, you know, they're able to do that. So we've taken this very seriously. And Coach Howard, thank you for joining us. We are happy to be joined by Garrett Hicks with Alabama A&M Bulldogs, 2020-21 SWAC Men's and Women's Virtual Media Day. And first of all, uh, how has uh, life been changed for you with everything that's been going on with COVID-19? 
Uh, life's very different as far as uh, a year ago today, uh, as far as training, as far as just lifestyle, just, just a learning curve for all of us. What's been the biggest adjustment as far as your training during all of the COVID restrictions? I think just training and I'm, I try to do as far as, as far as our time off, uh, just one-on-one -on -one training and just with limited people and, and even in my, my driveway, just by myself shooting. And, that is that the secret to your sauce? Just hey, stay in the driveway. Hey, that's, that's, where, that's, that's where the comfort is right there. Uh, tell me about last season. Uh, you guys were six and five at home. Uh, overall conference record five and 13. What do you think has changed and what will it take for that record to improve and for you guys to be a force this year in the conference? I think uh, we, have some, we have some great talented freshmen coming in this year to help us out a little bit. Uh, I think last year, I think we're a little inexperienced, trying to get our feet up under us again the season. And we started getting some games in and started winning some as far as uh, towards the end of the season. So I think experience as far as uh, improving our record this year will help us a lot. And during the end of the season, you did start to turn it around. Was it just a matter of understanding the league, understanding the speed of the game? What changed that made you start to see some light at the end of the tunnel? I think uh, as far as, I think playing the teams twice, the second game around, we kind of knew what, all the teams were, you know, going to run against us and getting used to the speed which each team plays with. I think that helped us a lot towards the end of the season. Uh, talk about uh, the expectations as far as this year, offensively and defensively. What do you need to improve on offensively in order to be a force? And defensively, as a group, what do you guys need to improve on? I think uh, movement. We can work on that. As far as uh, last year, you know, we kind of stood around and kind of waiting for somebody to make a play. I think off our guys moving around, we can uh, put more points on the board. And, of course, shooting will help us a lot, too. Um, as far as defense, uh, I think put more pressure on the ball, you know, being in, our, being in defensive stance and get some more rim protection down there. And I think we'll improve a lot on defense this year. Uh, during the uh, longer wait away from school, uh, did you ever think that this season would not happen? Uh, there was a little doubt, but I think, I think overall, I think I knew some type of season would be played. Uh, I always had hope. When you look at the season as far as traveling, I know playing at home is always good, but when you're on the road, what is the toughest place to play for Alabama and m uh, as far as in the conference? In the conference. Uh, just in the conference, I have to go to our rival, Alabama State, just because of the atmosphere uh, as far as that rival game is just unmatched. I hear you. Uh, for you personally this year, what is it going to take for you to meet the expectations that a lot of people have for you? I think uh, aggressiveness starts there. Uh, I think last year, kind of waited for things to happen. And towards the end of the season, I kind of got my feet up under me and started knowing where my shots would come in the offense. So the aggressiveness and uh, being a leader for the team. Do you want to be that player that you can tell coach, hey, give it to me. I can put the team on my back and carry them to a championship? Uh, of course I want to do that, but you know, I still got four other players on the court with me and the other guy was on the bench, so, you know, I think my talents are are still able to get a shot whenever I want and help this team win. Uh, you know, they've had a lot of things going on as far as social justice. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the emphasis has been on uh, how black males interact with law enforcement. Uh, what is your feeling on it? And with all the things that have been going on, have you participated at all in any of the uh, protests or programs to highlight social justice? Uh, well, as far as the first question, uh, as far as black men with law enforcement, I think, you know, try to show as much respect as we can and uh, try to not even put ourselves in that situation or any physical activity we have to be involved in. 
as far as uh, any protests, uh, I got to walk in one protest, uh, one of the earlier ones, and uh, it was a good moment for um, for the city of Huntsville. And enjoy the season, and thank you for joining us. Thank you.